Is there a connection between the Messianic era and the rebuilding of the temple? The answer to that question is a straightforward and unequivocal yes and no. What I mean by that is that, in essence, the truth of the matter is that there is no intrinsic uh, connection between these two concepts. Why is that so? Because the Mikdash, the building of the Mikdash of a sanctuary to Hashem is a separate Miswat uh, Aseh, a positive commandment in the Torah, in Sefer Shemoth, in the book of Exodus. No one disagrees that there is such a Miswa. Uh, and we also find explicitly in the Tamud Yerushalmi, in Masechet Ma'aser Sheni, the explicit statement, Zotho Mereth, based on a certain discussion that the Tamud there has, Zotho Mereth, from this we learn, She Beth HaMikdash Yibane, Kodem LeMalchuth Beth Dawid, that the Mikdash can or will be or can be built uh, before the re-emergence of Malchuth Beth Dawid, the uh, Davidic dynasty. In other words, descendants of uh, King David, Dawid HaMelech, before they are reinstated to their position as rulers of the Jewish people, something that we pray for every day uh, in the usual, uh, the more usual versions of the Shmon Esrei. We daven for this every day at Semah Dawid Abdelcha Merath Asmiyah. And in Nusach Eretz Yisrael, we speak about, uh, the, the, we have a baracha which ends Baruch Atah Hashem Elohe Dawid Ovunay Yerushalayim. So we pray for this every day, we mention this every day, and yet the Tamud Yerushalmi says that the Mikdash can definitely be built before this takes place. And we also have the historic precedent, and that is to say, Beit Sheni, the second temple. The second temple, after all, uh, built, uh, or be the process of beginning to rebuild it, began some 70 odd years after the destruction of the first Beit Mikdash, and yet there was no uh, return of the Davidic dynasty. There was no Malchuth Beth Dawid. The Jews who returned from the uh, Persian Empire, from Persia, from Babylon, to Eretz Yisrael, to the land of Israel, were living under the uh, rule of the Persian Empire. They were subjects to the Persian Emperor, as ex is written explicitly in, uh, in the books of Ezra and Nehemiah and the Tanakh. And therefore we see one can rebuild the Mikdash, and if one is able to, one is uh, required to do so, and, and without any reference to a, a, a messianic period, uh, period. And therefore, if the Israeli government were, for example, tomorrow to have a change of heart and to say, we have decided that we wish to rebuild the, the Mikdash, uh, and we would like to know from you, the, uh, the Chachamim, the uh, Torah scholars, uh, how to go about it and uh, whether we can do so, the answer would be, according to the Torah, a resounding yes. However, as I said, the answer is yes and no. Yes, because there is no essential intrinsic connection, but no, because in the minds and in the hearts of the vast majority of Jews, there is a connection. Because most Jews uh, incorrectly make a clear and direct connection between the rebuilding of the Mikdash, the Temple, and the Messianic era, and Yemuth HaMashiach. In their mind, these things go together. In the minds of many Jews, most Jews, and for that matter, I think many, many non-Jews as well, in their minds, uh, these two things will happen together at the same time. They will both occur as part of a, uh, a new period in human history. In other words, Yemoth HaMashiach will come about and the Mikdash will, as part of that process, will also be rebuilt. This is how most Jews, and as I say also many non-Jews, uh, understand this topic. Now, at this point we need to mention that there are two approaches to the concept of Yemoth HaMashiach, the Messianic era. There are those, based on certain views which we find in the Talmud, for example, uh, who claim that the Messianic period uh, will be a time when the rules of nature, the way of the world as we know it, 
will uh, be completely changed and transformed. Uh, the world will not be the same place that we, that we know today. In other words, there will be some kind of supernatural reconstruction and transformation of the world as we know it, of human existence. And therefore, the usual rules of, uh, of uh, rules and, and modalities of human existence will no longer apply. And miracles will occur as a matter of course. This is one opinion. And it's very important to understand this, and this I believe many people do not really uh, grasp. It's very important to, important to understand that if you believe that to be the case, then there is absolutely no reason not to assume that the, tr the same is true for the Mikdash. In other words, if the Melech HaMashiach, if the, the Messiah is someone who can perform miracles, who can... Um, raise the dead from their graves, who can change the, uh, override and uh, nullify the rules of nature. If, if in his time uh, human existence and the existence particularly of the Jewish people will become something very different from what we have known uh, for thousands of years, then why would one assume that the Mikdash could not fall from heaven? This is an, not only a, a reasonable uh, assumption, it's almost an inevitable assumption. Why should the Mikdash be different from the rest of reality? If the whole of reality is being renewed and transformed in, in, a, in a totally different, uh, adopting and, and taking on a totally different form, then why should the Mikdash not be part of that process? So therefore, when we find uh, that Rashi and the Tosafoth and certain other authorities claim that the future Beth Mikdash will fall from heaven completely built and uh, perfect in every way and will simply descend from heaven which is obviously a, a miraculous and supernatural event uh, totally removed from and divorced from the world as we know it uh, we must understand that this is part of their understanding of Yemoth HaMashiach, that Yemoth HaMashiach are also such a time where, where this is the rule, not the exception and therefore the Mikdash falling from heaven is, uh, is, is, is an entirely reasonable and, uh, in fact, uh, something that one should expect to be part of such, such a picture and such a reality. There is, however, uh, a very different position, which we also have to discuss. The second position, which we find in Hazal, is that En ben ha'olam hazal yimuth ha'mashiach ela shibud malchuyot bilavad, which means that the world as we know it, referred to as Ulam Hazar, this world, in other words, the world of human affairs with the uh, rules of nature and the normal ways of uh, life and existence in this world as we know them, none of that will change in the time of the Melech HaMashiach, in the Messianic period. The only difference will be Shibud Malchuyoth, which literally means that the Jewish people will no longer be Mishu Abadim, they will no longer be subjugated and ruled over by others. They will be their own masters, they will live in their own land as a sovereign nation, as a Mamlechet Kohanim Vroi Kadosh, as was always Hashem's intention, as is clear from the Torah and the Nevi'im and from all, all of our literature. And that, and that is only the, the, that is the only real uh, uh, significant difference between uh, earlier periods in Jewish history and the Messianic period of, of Jewish history. The difference is that the Jewish people will return uh, en masse or in ever-increasing numbers so that the uh, critical mass, the overwhelming majority of them eventually will live in Eretz Yisrael. They will be ruled over by, uh, by a, a descendant of David Melech of King David, Malchut Beth David therefore will be reinstated, and uh, the Jewish people will have a country in which they will live according to their to Al Torah, to, which is Hashem's will. Uh, was, this was the aim uh, and the purpose of giving the Torah to the Jewish people in the first in the first place. Only after that can the Jewish people also perform uh, to any in any significant and very meaningful way their task 
the divinely ordained task of teaching the rest of humanity about uh, the existence of and the truth of Hashem. But first, the Jewish people have to get their act together. So according to the, the position that Yemotha Mashiach, the days of the Messiah, are not a period of uh, miracles and supernatural events where the world remains as we know it. Uh, and as Rambam, for, just to illustrate this position, Rambam writes in Ilchoth Melachim uh, Milhamoth Perek Ahadasan, 11th chapter, Halacha Gimel. He writes, Ali Ale al Da'athach. Do not imagine for a moment, says the Rambam, that the Melech HaMashiach, the Messiah, must perform, must be able to perform miracles, to change the ways of nature. Or to bring about things that are normally not possible in this world, or to revive the dead, and similar things, as the fools think and say. So the Rambam writes explicitly, this is in Rambam's view and the view of many other authorities as well. This is the view of uh, th this concept that the Melech HaMashiach is a miracle worker and that uh, Yemoth HaMashiach is a supernatural period divorced from the reality which we know. This, in his view, is a foolish position. This, this is also the position of uh, many authorities, as I said, like Rabbi Yitzhak Barbanel and uh, Rabbi Yudha Lewi, and the list is very long. I won't go into all of, all of that right now. What's important to note is that there is this other position, and the Rambam is adamant that this is the truth of the matter. If you understand this to be the case, or if you adopt that position, if you believe that Yemoth HaMashiach is not some kind of uh, new brave world, uh, rather it is the world as we know it, but in a more perfected and uh, more sublime state uh, as, as it was intended to be, but not a different world in every respect from that which we know, then it follows, it should be obvious, that the Mikdash also is part of that same scenario. If the Melech HaMashiach does not perform miracles, if the difference between Olam Hazer, the world that we've known until now, and Yemoth HaMashiach is Shibud Malchiyot Bilavad, the only difference is the, the fact that we will re return to our land, as we have been doing now for some generations, and already at this point in time, a majority of the Jewish people live in Eretz Yisrael, and that we will be a sovereign nation, ruling over ourselves, not ruled by uh, foreigners who have no business to be here. And then it also follows that in such a normative Jewish reality in Eretz Yisrael, there will also be a Mikdash. But such a Mikdash would obviously have to be built by us. Why? Because we are commanded in the Torah to do so, just like we are commanded to do 101 other things. It, this is something which is incumbent upon us. And the reason that it can't fall from heaven is because that not, not, was not Hashem's intention, not with regards to the Mikdash, and not with regards to anything else. And that's why the first Mikdash, which was actually the, the Mishkan, I should say, in the desert, was built by Moshe and the Jewish people, did not fall from heaven. The first Mikdash, which was built by Shalom HaMelech, did not fall from heaven. And the second Mikdash, was not, which was built by the Jews who returned from, from Babel and Paras, from Persia and, and Babylon, did not fall from heaven. They were all built by us, by human beings. That was Hashem's will. That is the way of the world. That was the intention of the Torah all along. If one understands that Yemoth HaMashiach is such a period of time uh, where the Jewish people can uh, finally perform all those things that are incumbent upon it, and uh, can fulfill Hashem's will and the, the uh, overall plan of the Torah in its entirety, which includes rebuilding the Mikdash, there is absolutely no reason to assume uh, that the Mikdash could fall, should fall from heaven. And in fact, there's no reason to believe that it could fall from heaven, not because Hashem is incapable of making such a thing happen. Of course, that's not true. We believe Hashem can do anything if He so chooses. But simply because that is not the way Hashem designed the universe, the world as we know it. This is not the way He wishes to run it. And this is not why He told us in the Torah to build the Mikdash, so that He could instead do the job for us. That is not how the world works, according to this position. So when we look at this question of how will the Mikdash be rebuilt? Will it fall from heaven? 
or will it be rebuilt by, by the Jewish people through human agency? The real question is not with regards to the Mikdash specifically, because that's not a standalone issue. This is, has to be viewed as uh, in, within, within the context of the uh, a larger question, which is what kind of Yomot HaMashiach are we uh, expecting, are we looking forward to? If you assume and if you believe, as many Jews do, because this is what they've been taught, and this is something the Jews began to assume in increasing numbers over the lengthy Galuth, mainly for reasons of despair and for reasons of not being able to uh, see any other way out of, of the exile of the Galuth, which was increasingly dark and difficult and, and uh, impossible. Uh, simply because they couldn't imagine how they could get themselves out of this terrible hole in which they found themselves, increasingly Jews began to adopt that position that the Moth HaMashiach will be a time when Hashem will bring about the Geula and within, as part of that, within that context, will bring about the Mikdash in supernatural, miraculous ways because obviously we, the Jews, cannot do it. We are, it's beyond us. We are living in Galuth, we are persecuted, we are barely surviving from day to day. How can we even, we can't even imagine how we'll get back to Eretz Yisrael. We can't even imagine how we could reconstitute ourselves as a Mamlechet Kohanim, as a, as a Jewish nation. And therefore, you assume uh, all kinds of things, including that the Midrash will fall from heaven. On the other hand, if you understand in a more mature fashion, based on the more uh, reliable and down-to-earth sources which fit the simple plain reading of the Torah and the meaning of the Miswot of the Torah such as Wa'asulim Mikdash, that you shall build me a temple, you shall build me a sanctuary which is directed at us, not at Hashem. If you understand the Torah in those terms then everything in the Torah is to be performed by us. It's not Hashem's business as it were to make the Mikdash fall from heaven it's not his job to make everything happen in a supernatural way. It is rather our job to strive towards those goals and to believe in ourselves, to uh, know that we are capable of this, because this is what Hashem uh, has, uh, demands of us. This is what Hashem expects. And therefore, if that is what Hashem expects of us, then we also therefore can know that we are capable of it. Yes, it requires... Uh, much thought and planning. It requires patience. It requires tremendous effort, just as it required tremendous patience and effort and toil and Masirut Nefesh, uh, quite literally being willing to lay your life down in order for the Jewish people to return to Eretz Yisrael. In the same way, it will require much effort and time and planning and thought and uh, again, much Masirut Nefesh to be able to move us from our present point in, in Jewish history to the Gula HaShalema. But that is all within the realm and the, within the purview of what the Torah expects from us, what Hashem demands of us. If one understands Imot HaMashiach in that sense, in that way, as Rambam did, for example, then it, it, it is not only uh, unlikely or irrational to assume that the Mikdash will fall from heaven. It's something that should never happen and could never happen as it never did happen uh, in the past. So the Mikdash is only part of a much larger question and equation and therefore it is time for all Jews to ask themselves uh, what kind of Yemot HaMashiach am I looking forward to, am I expecting? The answer to that question is also the answer to the question, will the Mikdash fall, fall from heaven or be built by the Jewish people? The production of these videos and maintaining this channel demands much time and money. If you enjoyed this video, please show your appreciation and support. To make a donation, please go to www.machonshilo.org and press the PayPal button which appears on the upper right hand side of the home page. To sponsor a video or purchase Birkon Nusach Eretz Israel, please write us at office at machonshilo.org.